Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Now, if you've been following my channel a little while ago, I shared a video on how to cut and freeze okra and store it in your freezer. Well, a lot of you guys were skeptical in saying that I would not be able to get it nice and brown and crispy as you're seeing here in this screen. Well, today I'm gonna to show you guys just how to do that and it's gonna be straight out of the freezer. The first step is to take your frozen okra right out of the freezer. Now you do not want to defrost this because if you defrost it beforehand, what's going to happen is the okra is going to get very slimy because all of that water is going to cling to the okra and create the slime. So I put it straight into my hot pan that I heated up some oil in and I'm just going to allow it to fry without stirring it too much. After frying or sauteing for about 10 minutes on a medium heat, I'm going to go ahead and remove them from the pan. Now, as you guys can see, it has very nice dark golden brown marks all over it. It's nice and crispy. It is not mushy or anything like that. It is the perfect okra. Just make sure you keep your heat regulated because I find that when it comes out of the freezer, it tends to burn really, really quick. So just be careful of that and just make sure you're only stirring it once every couple of minutes. So this way you don't create the slime. The reason why I transferred the cooked okra onto a plate lined with a paper towel is because one, I wanted to go ahead and drain off the excess oil. When you fry up okra, you really need to add in a good amount of oil to get it nice and brown and crispy, and of course you can drain it off. But the second reason is being that I am adding shrimp into this recipe today, I needed to get the okra out of the pan so I could cook the shrimp just a little bit. So in my bowl here, I have some shrimp that I've washed and deveined. You can use whatever type of shrimp that you want. And all I've done is added on a little bit of salt, black pepper, garlic powder, and some Guyanese thyme. Once you mix it up, you can let it marinate or you can cook it right away. Into my heavy bottom pot, I'm going in with just a few tablespoons of oil. And once it heats up a little bit, I'm going to go in with all of my shrimp. You want to make sure that you put the shrimp in an even single layer so this way they're not too crowded. If they're too crowded then they're never going to get nice and golden brown. They're just going to steam and then cook in their own juices and that's really not what we're looking for today. So I'm going to cook these for about one to two minutes on each side or until they are nice and golden brown and about three quarters of the way cooked. After about a minute and a half of frying up on a medium to medium high heat, I'm flipping my shrimp. As you guys can see, they have a beautiful golden brown color on the other side. So I'm going to flip it and just allow it to cook for a little longer until the next side gets a little golden brown. And after about a minute and a half of cooking on each side and it's nice and golden brown, you're going to remove all of the shrimp from the pan. So basically we're doing this so this way we can have an empty clean pan so we can fry up all of our aromatics and then we'll add in everything back into the pan and allow them to fry up really well. Once you remove the shrimp, if you notice that your pan is a little too dry, you can add in a little bit of oil. But for me, I had just enough in the bottom of the pan. So at this point, I'm going in with my sliced onions and sliced tomatoes. and I'm going to saute them until the onions cook down a bit and the tomatoes melt away just a little bit. I'm using a plum tomato that had just turned red, so it's not super juicy. If you have a very juicy tomato, you're going to want to scoop out the seeds and the guts because the more moisture you have, the more slimy the okra will be. After cooking for about three minutes, you're going to see that your tomatoes and onions are cooked down really well. At this point, I'm going to go in with some ground seasoning. So in my little mortar and pestle, I have some Guyanese thyme, Guyanese thick leaf thyme. I have some hot pepper as well as some garlic. So I just pounded those up really well and I'm going to go ahead and add them into my onion and tomato mixture. By all means, if you don't want to make that fresh seasoning and you just want to use some homemade green seasoning or even the store-bought green seasoning, you can add that in at this time. I'm just going to stir this around for about 30 seconds until they cook for a little bit. After about 30 seconds of all of those aromatics cooking up with the onions and tomatoes, you're going to go in with your okra and the cooked shrimp. As you guys can see, while I'm pouring that okra in, it is not slimy. It looks nice and dry and loose, and that's exactly what you want. If your okra is very slimy, it means that you were stirring it too much or that there was too much moisture on your okra and you didn't cook it long enough in the beginning process when you browned it. So at this point, I'm just going to stir everything up together. I'm going to allow it to just marry together with all the flavors and allow the shrimp to cook for the rest of the way. And after an additional minute and a half, this mixture is done. At this point, I am adding in some salt and I'm adding in some pepper to taste. Whenever making okra, I always add in my salt and pepper at the end. The reason being is because if you were to add salt in the beginning, the salt is going to draw out even more moisture from all of the ingredients. And again, it'll make your okra slimy. So take all these precautions so this way you have a nice dry, brown and crispy okra dish when you're done. Whenever you hear a Caribbean person saying that they're making fried okra or sautéed okra, chances are they're also making some dal and rice to serve it with. It is such a classic combo. So in my plate here, I'm adding in some steamed jasmine rice. I'm piling on a good amount of that fried okra. 
and then I'm going to flood my plate with some dal. Now, this was such a delicious meal to put together, a very comforting meal, and I genuinely hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed yet, and join the Matthews Guyanese Cooking family, and leave your comments down below. I'll see you guys again very soon. Bye, everyone.